second to last race in the regular season of the Gatorade Cup Series, season number eight. We head to the Kentucky Speedway for the running of the KFC 400. This is one of the final races to make the chase for the Gatorade Cup Series. Lawrence Pound on the 24 is just on the outside of the top 10 points coming into this race, has the pull for today's event. To his outside is the 11 of Jake Galloway. Then Galloway's teammate Matthew Swell starts third, and McDowell fourth, and the driver with a 200 point advantage in the point standings. Pena Salada are points to rounds at the top five. In sixth, we have Griffin Lynn. Seventh place is second in points, Steven Taylor. That's, that also means all three JJR cards inside the top 10 near to start. Then Alexander in eighth, Danny Lloyd ninth, and rang out the top 10 is Diego Yepes. The rest of the field, Anthony Hernandez does the final spot inside the top 10 points, starts 12th. To his inside the 39, Joe Jefferson. Then we have Anton Charbois, to his outside, Roberto Rivera. Then there's Greg Torres and Eli Bright. Behind them, Max Anderson and Levi Shones. Then we have Steve Larker with Sebastian Kukulon, Jacob Davidson and Dale Lightning. Then there's Justin Lightning with Charles Robert. Luke Rainey with Jay Jefferson. Then we have Landon Lyons and Carter Friesen. Oliver Galloway with Code Luigi. Then TJ Hanley and Josh Crash. Behind them, Nathan Stapleton and Trip McInnes. Then there's Keegan Thompson and Tim Gary. Jonathan Buford with Jeff Bright. Then we have Zachary Fisar Sr. and Derek Hamill. And in the final row, Ryan Taylor, the 09. And to his outside is the 14 of Patrick Smith. So there's our 40 car field for the KFC 400 here in Kentucky. Let's get going with our starting command. Drivers, start your engines. And our 40 cars fire up here for the KFC 400, one of the last races to make the chase for the Gatorade Cup Series, season number eight. Some of these driver seasons rest on this race and this race alone. Lawrence Pompon is just on the outside of the top 10 points coming into this race, but a good day for that 24 team could see them getting inside the top 10, while his teammate Anthony Hernandez is the one just inside the top 10. He starts on the outside, but closer to the front. We'll see if he can get down to the bottom lane. 41 laps of action at the, at the Kentucky Speedway. Does JGR keep the speed from qualifying and bring it to the race? All three start inside the top seven. As we come to the restart zone, we are green at Kentucky. That didn't take long. Three wide are in the pack. Wells leads left way, went three wide for the lead to turn one. He's gonna keep it to turn one. Now Pena Slot, the 77 are points, are looking for five bonus points to the inside of the 18 down the back stretch. And that's not what the competition wants to see, even though the points lead doesn't really matter at the end of this regular season. Salah's just so strong. Definitely a threat for the championship and probably the favorite coming into this race. Salah gonna clear easily. Eli Bright, the 88, won the target race yesterday. To the inside of Wells, down the front stretch. That is for the second position. Eli Bright looking for the target and Gary Cup Series sweep here today. Eli down low for the Leon Salah. The 77 great run through the middle lane. Gets clear and pulls away a little bit. Eli fills his way into second. There's Anthony Nunes, the 48. Remember how we mentioned he is the last driver in on points inside the top 10. There he is. He fills his way down in line inside the top 10. Dale Lightning three wide to one car. He's just outside as well. He's inside the top 15 of points. He needs a great day here today. Front two pulled by Eli, closing onto the back of the stem center, using a higher lane through the corner to try, get the, to try and get the run down the straightaway. Using that grip up top, getting the run down the back stretch. Can't make the move quite yet. We'll see if he can make it through three and four. He once again goes to the high side. He's not giving up. And look at Anthony Hernandez. That's Eli's teammate coming forward. Got by Justin Lightning right here down the front stretch. Hernandez to the top three. Five points would be huge for him. It would cancel out Palapon. His teammates, or excuse me, Palapon didn't get the points because he got taken three wide in the first lap. Dale Lightning through the middle of the one, emerges, clear of Carter Friesen. Speaking of Friesen, the 38, he has one of the wild card spots, which only by two points over TJ Hanley. So Friesen, he wants every bonus point he gets as well, so he's trying to get up here and lead a lap for five points. Friesen is back in the pack, single pot the front. That's the front three, break away. Hernandez to the inside with his teammate Eli Bright. Hendrick Morris for Chevrolet will get by our points here. Solana to grab the race lead. Eli right out front. Slides up. Now the 48 comes to the bottom lane with Humphrey and Dale Lightning. The 48 slides and it fills the one for a second. Freezing the 38 uses the middle lane. Jay Jefferson, the 78. 12th in points coming into the race. 
So he has a shot to make the postseason now if all goes right. Eli leads the lap. Lightning to his bottom lane to turn one. Lightning wants these five points. Every point matters. Here in the Gatorade Cup Series, Salada's found his way back down line. Pushes the 70 up the racetrack. Maybe the bumper given through one and two. Oh, McDowell sideways. And around they go behind. The 13 drops of Buford spins down the back stretch. And they get another Jeff Price around. Greg Torres. Derek Hamill. Bright saves his car. Four cars and all involved. Cole and Luigi trying to get back with teammate Dale Lightning. They will be one two at the start finish line. Lightning leads Luigi second. Salada third. Craziness there. McDowell almost wrecked. And then they en ended up wrecking. Further back in the pack. Look at the smoke show that happened there because of cars trying to hit the gas and get away. Yellow flag comes out. Buford, the 13, one of the first to go around. We'll see what happened to him. Down the back stretch off turn two. This was a bad situation for Jonathan Buford to be in. He's down low and he's trying to get up to the top side off the corner, trying to get the run. And right here, he's kind of sliding up. Alexander Rowe getting a great run off the top side. Comes up into that 33, then comes back down to the 10, trying to get off him. Hamill in the 75 involved. There's the 10 spin back up across the track. Gets damage right there from TJ Hanley. Jeff Bright goes for a spin. Nathan Stapleton goes through. Bright keeps it off the inside wall and keeps that car going straight. One of the big storylines, though, TJ Hanley was two points off a wild card spot for Carter Friesen. And he got some pretty good damage from this as he and Greg Torres made contact. Jeff Wright did get some front-end damage when he kept out the inside wall. Great job at Jeff Wright, though. Speaking of him, he did a great job. He got that car going straight again on the access road. And the 13 slid up, tried to keep up the 33. The 10 was down there. Derek Hamill gets the inside wall. But look at Jeff Wright, how close he comes to the inside wall and saves the car. We'll go on board with a few drivers. TJ on the A2. We mentioned he's only a few points out of the wild card spot. How much front-end damage is there to this A2 car? Oh, that's a good bit. If I'm the 82 crew chief, I am bringing my driver down payload to make sure everything is fine with that car and getting it repaired as best I can. Jeff Wright, the 5 left, some front damage as well as he goes for a spin but saves his car. <laughs> Jeff is a past winner of Kentucky back in season 5. He wants another one, it'd be his first since season number 6. So back in front was Dale Lightning, his teammate Cole Luigi in second. CGR, 1-2 at the start finish line. Pena Salada, our points leader third. And then the 200 more sports drivers of Eli Bright, Anthony Hernandez. Teammates at the front. Let's see how the three start goes. Lightning, the one, is out front. Coming back green with 30 laps of racing to go. Dale Lightning, the one, leads his teammate Cole Luigi on this restart. Greg Torres a lap down from that damage. He'll be 40 seconds. With all four cars to the left on the racetrack, 41 on the lead lap. Dale Lightning leads his teammate Cole Luigi. Then our points here, Payne Salama in third. Then the 200 more sports drivers, Eli Lap Price and Anthony Hernandez run up the top five. The car frees in the sixth, Josh Crash seventh, Jay Jefferson, Ryan Taylor, and Tim Gary are our front ten. For freezing, you have to know he's feeling a little bit better about his wildcard hopes now. Considering the A2 is back in the back with some damage. We'll see, though, if a new driver wins and they're not inside the top ten points. That could be big for that. Green flag back in the air. Luigi spins the tires, and the 42 lost a lot to the outside. Eli Bright to the inside to turn one. Right for fourth, going for second through one and two. Big restart for the 88 driver. Stay side by side with the 42 down the back stretch. Even to turn three. Eli, the inside lane will prevail for him. He'll grab the second spot away. Freezing the 30 up to third. Josh Crash has two victories on the season, but is not top 20 points. If he's not top 20 points by the end of Richmond, he will not use those wins as wild cards. Big race for Crash right here, right now. Freezing for the lead, off turn two. Big run for the 38 down the back stretch. Got a great launch. Side by side with Lightning to turn number three. Josh Crash to the bottom lane, takes it three wide. He wants five points. Salah, the 77 coming back for it. Eli through the middle lane. Wells tight down low. The 88 gets clear in the middle. At least he's trying to. He does get down line. Crash to the front. Salada second. Going for the lead through one and two. Eli's a run the 88. Where does he take it? He goes with the 77 for now. I'm surprised he didn't take it three wide. He's looking three wide. Here he comes. Three wide for the lead. Eli right to the bottom. Wells, the 18 with him. The 88 clears once again. Eli right back up front in Kentucky. Wells back to second. Diego Lopez, three wide. The 87 coming forward. He'll go three wide for third. Anthony Nance coming back forward. Wells for the lead. Yepes slides up. The 87 allows Tim Gary the inside lane down the back stretch. 
Mathis Wells. Going to clear Eli Bright through three and four to get back to the front. Now, Anthony Hernandez, three one on teammate Eli Bright and Tim Gary. Hernandez through to second, and a car is hit the pits. There is a car in pit road. The yellow flag will come out for a crash. Luke Ray hit the pits, and possible Lord Kama went around. Now can Luke Rainey, no, they're racing back, the front four racing back, I was about to say, Luke Rainey's taking the caution flag, let's see how this all plays out for him, if he's going to fall lap down or not. Oh, Luke might be out, yeah, terminal issue for the two, and big first chase chances, tire issue, on the two, Wells leads us back to the 18, Hernandez second, Gary third, Eli Bright fourth, yellow number two waves just before that halfway point. It was trouble with the two blue grand coming up at road, and then possibly Lawrence Palpon goes for a spin. We'll see the reason for the caution flag. So here it is. Everyone is down the bottom lane, stacked up. Luke Rainey, the two, you see right there, that blue number two. He's got an issue, and coming down here, it's a tire issue. You notice it right there, possibly a tire blowing out as he gets low, trying to get out of the way. Here comes the drivers coming through on the top side. And it looks like the 24 tries to move up right here, and here comes the double zero advantage to on the outside hard in the Lions. 31 squeezes the double zero into the wall. Palpon goes around the 24, brings the caution out. Joe Jefferson just missed it, tripping in, slams on the brakes, and the 24 does a spin, one single spin, but keeps it going straight. But that's a tough break for Luke Green. He'll be out of this race now, that tire issue. Lawrence Palpon, as you mentioned, just a few points by his teammate, Anthony Hernandez. He goes for a spin. How bad is the damage? Anthony Jarwa flew around and got landed in line, so the 31 the double zero might have some pretty heavy damage as well. But a great sight by Lawrence Palpon to keep that car going straight. The field comes around, back in front, Mathis Wells, the 18, but the 200 more sports cars, the 40 of Anthony Nunez, the 80 of Eli Bright, they've been fast. Both will once again restart inside the top five, but it's the 18, Mathis Wells, out front for the restart. We will restart just before halfway, it'll be 22 laps of racing to go, excuse me, 21 laps of racing to go here at Kentucky. Mathis Wells, the 18, is our race leader, only car is the two blue fan, that's a really tough break for him. His chase chances could be all but over because of that. Greg Torres, a lap down still in 41st. Anthony Charbois will be 40th with that damage. TJ Hanley was very slow in the last restart. He'll be 39th. So Wells leads Anthony Hernandez, Tim Gary, Eli Bright, and Ryan Taylor inside the top five. Diego Yapez, sixth. Roberto Rivera, seventh. Griffin Lynn, Dale Lightning, and Pointsier Salada inside the top ten. Watch that 40 and 88. They've been fast all race long. They want to find themselves inside the top five for the restart. Back racing. Wells gets the jump. Hernandez in the 48 stays with them. Eli to the inside, Tim Gary for third. Yepes went top to bottom. There it is, have a down for Griffin Lynn. Now they come down the back stretch. Anthony Hernandez, the 48 with the run to Wells. Does he get the help from his teammate Eli Bright? Can break it down from Yepes. Oh, almost did. The A7 got him an arrow loose up the racetrack, goes to 88. Hernandez, the 48, keeps second. Wells leads with 20 laps of racing to go. Hernandez, hot in the 18th, tail to turn one. Looking to the inside, through one and two, he has the nose. Side draft off the corner and down the back stretch, side by side for the lead. Hernandez down low, Wells up top. Yepes clearing third, the 87. Dale Lightning to the inside, Jake Galloway coming forward. Hernandez clears the lead. He's out front now. Wells trying to get down from Yepes, trying to block him. Yepes goes to the apron. Not having any of that. Yepes to second for the lead. Tight down low. 48 gets it back. Jake Galloway, the 11, starts second. Here he is, three wide. But Wells, his teammate, gets clear. Now Wells with the crossover to the 87. Yepes. The 18 back for a second. Galloway at the racetrack from the 7 of Lynn. Here comes Griffin. To the inside, three wide for third. Racing all over this one and a half mile track. Griffin Lynn through, through to third. Carter Freeze in the 30 on the inside. Josh Crouch with them. 18 Wells using a higher lane to try to get the run. Galloway back to the inside for third. And now Joe Gibbs Racing suddenly come to life. Two of their cars inside the top three. As the 18 is second, Jake Galloway after third. Now Mathis Wells looking low. Couldn't get it done there. But now as his teammate, the 11, Jake Galloway clear to help him. To turn one, Wells to the inside with the run. Jake Galloway, the 11, a big run through the middle lane. Look at the 11 go down the back stretch. He has a run for the lead. Oh, right back stretches to Ryan Taylor and Steven Taylor. Racing back to the yellow. Third caution of the race. Side by side for teammates leads back to the caution flag. Joe Gibbs racing. Jake Galloway inside. Mathis Wells outside. At the line. Mathis Wells 
back to the line in first. And he'll restart out front. It's going to be with about 10 to go. Yellow flag number three. Here at Kentucky, it's a smoke show down the back stretch again. Yellow flag, and I saw Ryan Taylor and second of point Steven Taylor go for a spin. Jeff Wright has done Patrick Smith. He's been on a downswing. Once again, he's locked in to the chase of my rope, but he could use up a wild card spot if he falls out. Is that Steve Walker? He has three wins, but he could not be top 20 in points. And he didn't need this to happen to him. There's Ryan Taylor. Steven Taylor, the 20 there as well. We'll see the reason for the caution flag, the third of the day. And this one could be the final one of the day. We'll see what happens. Steven Taylor, Ryan Taylor goes for a spin down the back stretch. Talk about five wide. We rarely talk about that at any racetrack, and definitely not Kentucky of all places, and they are five wide. Charles Hart makes a big move, five wide to the inside of these four drivers. Steven Taylor kind of slides up into Stapleton, in a row. They all squeeze together. Ryan Taylor, look at the cars up off the ground there. Luckily, they all come back down to earth. Steve Larkin makes hard contact with the inside wall. Trip McGinnis comes up, and McDowell barely contact there. Jay Jefferson, Smith comes up. He gets into Derek Hamill around. They go and Jeff right the five. No to go on that. Jonathan B for the 13 damage. Land lines through the middle of all that gets by. There's Smith and Jeff right against the outside wall. Smith trying to get it controlled. My oh my. How about Jay Jefferson? How much damage does he have in the 70, if at all? Because he's just outside the bubble. He gets into it. And we have an onboard camera we're going to have to see, but Smith. He gets hit pretty hard by Jeff Bright. Bright is an onboard camera, as we mentioned. We'll see how it was from his views. There's Smith and Bright up against the outside wall. Jeff Bright, as we mentioned, a past winner here at Kentucky in the Gary Cup Series. Season number five. He was looking for another winner today. It's not going to happen. Oh, hard the gap. He and, the five, or he and the 14 got hung together there and couldn't really get off each other and off the wall. Smith is locked in with his all-star win, but he could use a wild card spot if he falls outside the top 10 in points. He had a miss. Came up and no one, no one behind him didn't get slowed down. I think it was Derek Campbell. The 14 is definitely going to be done for the race now. So Smith in danger of falling outside the top 10 points and having to take a wild card spot for his all-star victory. And one more, but we mentioned Jay Jefferson, the 78. How much damage did he get, if any? He is in a spot to make the top 10 of points if he gets good finishes. <laughs> Alva Galway, the winner of the last two races, got into the outside while they were trying to miss it. Looking for Jay Jefferson. He didn't get any damage. Their damage is very minimal. He just lost in track position. Let's we'll see if he can regain that on this restart. It's going to be close for him. So back in front was Wells in the 18. His teammate Jake Galloway in second. But now, Wells, a restart. Galloway has never won a Gatorade Cup Series race. It's been so long for him. Can he get to victory lane? We're about to find out who's going to win the KFC 400 at the Kentucky Speedway. We'll come back to the green flag with just over 10 laps of racing to go. Coming back green, we mentioned it's going to be just over 10 to go. It'll be 12 to go. Mathis Wells leads teammate Jake Galloway on this restart. From that crash, Jeff Wright, Derek Hamill, Patrick Smith, and Steve Larker are out along with Ryan Taylor. So there'll be 36 cars on the racetrack, 35 on the lead lap. Nathan Stimpton, the last of them, TJ Henley, will be the next one. Mathis Wells, the 18, leads his teammate Jake Galloway in the restart. So JGR, 1-2 at the moment. Carter Friesen looking for a second victory of the season and third. Anthony Hernandez is fourth. And Diego Yapez runs at the top five. Griffin Lynn, Eli Bright, Josh Crash, Justin Lightning, Cole Luigi. Who gets it done at Kentucky? 12 to go on the restart. Wells away. Front three get away. Back racing. Freezing with a great restart. Jumps to the inside second place already. Yapez for fourth. Hernandez spun the tires big time. Diego Yapez into the inside lane. Gets by the 48. Freezing for the lead. Off turn two. Down the back stretch. Friesen looks low, gets back up in line, trying to get the draft off the 18. Down the back stretch. They stay single file. Yepes fourth. Galloway gets back to third. Friesen to the inside, he's there. Gets the side draft down the front stretch. Does Galloway take it three wide? The 38 blocks a move off there. To turn one. Galloway looking to the inside. Gets to his corner panel, through one and two. Yepes down to the 80 of Eli about three wide for third. And side by side coming to 10 to go. 
The sun's starting to go down, the light's starting to come on. So transition for this track. Who has their car set up for the nighttime? Because of all the cautions we've had, it's gone a little long. Freezing gets clear for a second. Eli Bright 3 White is going to try and grab third. Wells using the outside lane, the 18. Eli grabs third. Griffin Lynn fourth. Now Lynn for third. As for the lead. Freezing, big run down the back stretch. Gets beside the 11. They're once again side by side through three and four. Freezing back by the 11. Galloway filters his way back to second. Here comes Griffin Lynn with the run in the seven. It's been a miserable season for our season number six champion. Looking for his first victory of the season. To the inside, he looks. Has the nose and has the position. Lynn through to second. A champion of the Gary Cup Series running down the last runner-up of the series. Carter Friesen finished second of points last season. Looking to make the chase this season. Lynn looking for a win because he is in no shot of a championship at this point. Front three, single file, close proximity to each other. Get away to the inside, eight to go. Gets tight a little bit down there. Lynn trying to use the outside lane. He's a little bit faster off the corner. Four wide. Salada four wide with Fitzwater, Rivera, and Luigi. Here they come to the start finish line. Friesen once again leading in the 38. Lynn looking to his inside to turn one as the position down low. Try and get the run through the corner. Try and get the run the inside. So hard this point there is because of the tire wear. But gets a nose ahead down the back stretch. Where's Jake Elway and the 11 go? He's going to stay high. Yepes to the bottom lane. A big run through three and four. Diego Yepes to the bottom lane. Going to grab a top three spot away from Jake Galloway. But trying to fight back in the outside is the 11 car. Freezing once again. Also fighting back to the outside. Galloway to the middle. That's the place to be, I think. The middle lane. You're going to get a great run off the corner here. Watch the run onto the A7 Yepes. Here's Greg Torres. Torres is very slow. Who gets around in time? Lynn to the outside. Galloway to the inside. The outside lane gets by. It's Lynn Yepes. One, two, and almost contact. Freezing third. Wells up to fourth. Galloway falls back to fifth. And that's a long jam trying to get by the 10. And if they wreck a yellow coming out, would end the race. Yepes is out front. They're stacked up three, four, and even five. I just don't see them making it back. We'll see if the 10 can get out of the way. Good enough. Four cars pull away. Come to four to go. It's Diego Yepes leading. Carter freezing Griffin Lynn side by side second. Lynn with the run off the top side. Kick it back by the 38. Four to go now, Kentucky. Lynn keeps second. Freezing third. Wells with the racetrack. Galway to his inside. We'll grab fourth. Jake Galway sells a glimmer of hope. Down the back stretch of their race. Roberto Rivera come with the run inside the top five. Can anyone get to Diego Yepes and pass him? Griffin Lynn the closest to do that. Three laps left. Looking to the inside. Down the front stretch is the seven. He gets the nose. Side by side to turn one. The seven's been the best at making that bomb lane work. He's going to do it again. Look at Jake Galloway. Big run through one and two. He got to the bottom of Carter Friesen to the bottom of Yepes now. Down the back stretch. Galloway. Going to try and grab second. Come to two to go. He's had the A7. Now the A7 fights back in the outside. Two to go at Kentucky. Side by side for a second. Lynn pulls away in the race lead. Can the 11, can the 38 run down? They get side by side again for a second. Only going to allow the 7 to pull away. Coming to the white flag in the KFC 400. Hanley's ahead. I don't think they'll catch them. Now three wide for a second. Friesen trying to get clear in the middle. He needs this win badly for a chase spot. Coming to the white flag. It's Griffin Lynn. He's pulled ahead. Last lap in the KFC 400. A nice gap for Linda turn one. He's pulled away there, bound for a second behind. It's only hurt them that were battling. Down the back stretch, final time. Lynn trying to hold off the field. Friesen trying to close in to turn three. Lynn using the middle lane, the protective lane, will come off turn number four. Checkered flag in the air, season number six, champion back to victory lane. Lynn wins at Kentucky. Great battle there at the end. Griffin Lynn fought his way to the inside and got clear. As they battled for a second, he pulled away. Griffin Lynn, the winner of the KFC 400's first of the season. Let's go see the finishing results. 
Here are the finish results from the KFC 400 at the Kentucky Speedway. Three caution flags for 12 laps and 13 lead changes, 10 different drivers leading laps in this race. Griffin Lynn, the seven, had the best car there at the end. He can make the inside work when others couldn't, and Lynn gets the victory lane. Carter Friesen ends up second here today. Uh, that's definitely going to be good for his point situation, though. He can move up, try and get ahead of the other drivers that are trying to get wild card spots. Roberto Rivera in third, Diego Gapez fourth, Josh Crash fifth. Mathis Wells, 14 of the 41 laps led in the, the most of anyone. He'll end up sixth. Max Anderson, seventh, Charles Driver, eighth. Jake Galloway, so close to his first victory in the Gary Cup Series. He'll sell for a ninth place finish. And Zachary Fitzwater Sr. got up to the top 10 at the end. Looking down at the top 20, Lawrence Palmpon. How about him? The, 12th finishing position, started on pole, didn't even lead a lap, but was always up towards the front, but really the Hedgehog Sports cars kind of fell off at the end. Maybe the lap car, Greg Torres, had something to do with that. Jay Jefferson up to 13th. That is a good spot for him to try and get good points day for him. Let's see if he's any any way closer to the top 10 points. Slog going to extend that points over Steven Taylor with a 15th place finish as Taylor finished 26th with the damage from that crash. 35 cars on the lead lap. Torres kind of held up some of the field there. He ended up 36th. Like drivers like Cole Luigi got held up, along with Eli Bright. They actually finished behind some of the damaged cars. Maybe look down at the rest. Let's now go see how the points are heading into the final race of the regular season. 25 races in the books, and here are how the points shake up. Pena Salada, a 242-point lead over Steven Taylor, who is second. That points lead, though, will be erased once the chase starts. Max Anderson is third. Trip McGinnis and Code Luigi are our front five. You got to know they're, they, they're feeling pretty safe about their chances. Sebastian Kukulan, sixth. Patrick Smith is down to seventh. He is in a spot to where he can fall outside the top ten in points, and that would use up a wild card spot. So watch for Smith at Richmond. Even though he's locked in, he can still play a role in how this chase plays out. Jacob Davison, eighth. Anthony Hernandez and Lawrence Poundpound, the two teammates, ninth and tenth. So we look at the top 20. Justin Lightning has fallen outside the top 10 in points and is 11th, 21 points out. Jay Jefferson is 32 points out. Carter Friesen up to 13th is 69 out. Josh Crash is up inside the top 20 in points, 14th. Right now, our two wild cards, Josh Crash in 14th with two victories and Charles Robert in 19th with two victories. But the, the problem is with that, Robert can easily fall outside the top 20 in points. It's not a big margin he has over 21st in points. So if the 9 were to fall out, it would then go to the 71. But can the 71 haul off the 38? If the 71 gets in over the 24 or the 48, that would knock one of them out. And then Friesen would possibly have it. So a lot can go on here at Richmond. As you see Ryan Taylor right there, 20th. Robert is only one point ahead of him, but then TJ Hanley is 63 back. So it, it's still possible for that 9 to fall out 64 points. If Hanley gets another victory, that could possibly gain him those points. If he gets out of the 9, wild card spot for him. You got to know that Hanley Lynn is up to 24th. So another victory for him, even though it's very, very unlikely, another victory for him could get him a wild card spot. You got to think Luke Green, Zachary Fitzroy Sr., they got to be thinking their chances are done. Same with Steve Larkin and Oliver Gatwell, even though they have multiple victories, they're down the 30s in the points. I don't think there's any way to overcome that. So as we mentioned, Richmond is the last race to make the chase 400. 26 races, and they all come down to this. I will see you guys then.